Ann Murray at Southern Art Gallery. And today, as part of our uh, Watercolor 101, we will be looking at glazing. Now, basically, glazing is just layering one color over another color after the first color that you put down is totally dry, which is what I've done here. I've laid down colors and I've allowed them to dry. If you glaze over a wet paint, it will lift the paint underneath and combine the two paints and you won't get the same effect that you get from glazing over a dry paint. So I have dried these. We're gonna look at these and see what colors we get and basically show you how to glaze. What I've done is I've laid down a wash, a light wash of ultramarine, warm gray, sennelier gray, these are all sennelier colors, lemon yellow, sennelier color, nickel azo, quinacridone gold, Indian yellow, which are M. Graham colors, burnt sienna, and that is a da Vinci color, and azo green, which is an M. Graham color. And now what we're gonna do is take our little practice palette here, and we're gonna go over, we're gonna basically layer over all, each one of these and see what colors develop. The first one we're gonna use is ultramarine. So we'll look over here and we'll get our ultramarine. And the way I like to add water to my palettes is with a little um, squeeze bottle like this. You can use a squirt bottle if you'd rather, but if you when you squirt, it kind of goes everywhere. So I tend to just use little drop bottles. A lot of people just dip right into their water. I don't do that because it tends to, uh, your water tends to be uh, muddied up. Sometimes I do, but it, it's uh, most of the time I try to, to make my uh, mixes clean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the ultramarine and we're gonna lightly glaze over all of these colors ever so lightly so that um, we don't disturb the underneath color. Now what you'll see when it dries, as you can see, all of our, our yellows are turning green because when you either mix or glaze over yellow with blue, you get a green. Okay, so now let's do the pyro red. And the same, um, the th same thing will apply when you mix, when you put a, pie. now pyro red is a little on the opaque side, so you're not going to see quite as much, like with the ultramarine, you're not seeing as much purple as you would normally see because the pyro red is a little bit, um, but it's leaning a little bit to the purple there. Let's see here. And sometimes, you know, you can glaze more than one time. You can glaze, you can put many, many glazes over um, your colors. Okay, let me make sure that I have the right color here for quinacridone rust. I think, where is it on here? Maybe it's not on this palette. Okay, apparently quinacridone rust is not on that palette, so we'll mix it over here. Quinacridone rust is also an M. Graham color. It's a beautiful color. And I chose to glaze over these grays just to see if there would be any significant change in the colors when, when you actually glazed over them. The wonderful thing about glazing is that it allows your colors to be totally transparent and to, to the underlying color like here will actually show through 
see how those colors are showing through and you get this luminosity that you really can't get any other way so let's try the perylene green I'll tell you what let's perylene green where are you i know you're on here there you are I'll put you over there and we're going to add a little bit more water to these Learning how much water to put in your paints comes with practice. If you add too much water, uh, your, your paints just get too thin. So you kind of learn how to do that, how to mix the correct um, level of water. Okay, let's see. Now this is a very powerful color, so it's probably going to cover up everything that's under it, but we'll see. And I'm trying to lay down as light of a wash as I can. As you can see, it's being affected by the Azo Green and the Indian Yellow here. This is also a good way to learn which paints work well together. And the rule of glazing is that you basically glaze light to dark because if you put a really dark color underneath because of the nature of watercolor um, you're going to lose that color that's underneath unless it's a more dominant color than the color you've put on top of it so okay let's try indigo if we look up here there's indigo this is one of my very favorite colors. I love indigo. Indigo makes beautiful, beautiful glazes. And it basically, it's a darkening color. So if you have a, if you need a shadow, let's say you, you painted something in a yellow and you needed a shadow, then indigo, and, and these dark colors make beautiful shadows. They make they're able to darken your colors that are too light and build up depth. And that's how you get a dimension in your paintings. So you're pushing the values with the darker colors. You're changing, you're, you're alternating your, and that's really pretty there. You, you're alternating your values and creating a full range of values rather than, um, if you paint everything the same value, then you end up with a uh, very flat painting. This is Quinacridone Magenta, and these are core paints up here. And that is gorgeous. I knew it would be. Quinacridone Magenta is a wonderful glazing color. It is a wonderful, it's probably my favorite glazing color. It's also a wonderful mixing color. So we're gonna do um, some separate ep episodes on specifically on which colors mix the best with other paints. And you'll find that quinacridone magenta is one of those paints. Uh, ultramarine is one of those paints. Sennelier Gray, <clears throat> believe it or not, is just beautiful in mixes. It's a wonderful mixing color. Okay, everyone, as you can see, I've completed this chart. And you basically see the combinations that you can get from glazing just this is just one color over another color and the important thing about glazing is to use transparent colors if you use a color which is not transparent which is opaque or has a little bit of opacity to it like the Payne's gray you can see that it will darken everything but you lose the vibrancy so it's important to choose uh, very translucent colors when you do this, like the lemon yellow, the uh, quinacridone magenta, the turquoise, the uh, the thalo, well, thalo blue, yes, uh, ultramarine. They're all beautiful mixes. The azo green does beautifully. Indian yellow, burnt sienna gives you a little bit of a murkier um, layer, which sometimes you need. This is the quinacridone gold. This is the nickel azo. Beautiful, beautiful combinations. Lemon yellow. This is the sennelier gray. Now when you use the sennelier gray or the warm gray, 
that should be your first layer because they are, they do have white in them, which makes them a little more opaque than the other colors. But here's your ultramarine, your quinacridone magenta, pyrrole red, alizarin crimson, quinacridone rust, which apparently is not a good layering color, turquoise, um, perylene green, which just darkens everything with a beautiful um, green tint to it, phthalo blue, indigo, cobalt, ultramarine again, you can see it's just beautiful, and Payne's gray. And then I went ahead and I did the Core High Chroma set, which we just reviewed on our channel. And these are extremely transparent colors, with the exception of the um, Da Vinci, or the, well, they're violet. They, it's the dioxazine violet. But if you look at the other colors, you can see just how, if you glaze with a truly transparent color, the gorgeous, bright, vivid intensity that you can get from glazing. Their quinacridone magenta is just excellent. And their green, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's it's really azo green, but they call it something else. But it's a beautiful um, glazing color. This is the bright orange, and this is their um, quinacridone gold, which I don't care for too much on it, is it on its own, but it really is a nice glazing color. So there you have it. I hope this shows you the value of learning to glaze and layer in watercolor and how important um, it is to learn this skill. And if you like this video, please subscribe and come back and see us and we will do more videos in the future on things that I think are relevant to learning watercolor.